the Rankine cycle with superheat and reheat. We'll sketch out how that's accomplished. Here is a steam generator. Steam comes out. This time when it comes out, it's superheated instead of just saturated vapor. It'll go into a turbine, but we're going to have two turbine stages. So we'll have like two turbines, the high pressure turbine, the low pressure turbine. They'll go into the first turbine stage and come out of that turbine and go back to the steam generator for some additional heating before it goes into the second turbine stage, which is a low pressure turbine because the pressure is dropped. And then after the second turbine, you go to the condenser, and from the condenser go to the pump, and then from the pump back into the steam generator, like that. So the steam generator adds heat on the first pass, QSG, it's like your standard uh, pass, but then it also has some heat added in the reheat, Q. RH for reheat. So there's two heat sources into the working fluid or two locations where heat is added. We have uh, states. Let's go ahead and label state one. That's traditional. State one is the inlet to the first turbine. State two, after the first turbine and before you reheat. State three is after you reheat. Oops, I already have state three there. Then state four. Then state five and then state six. And as you approach a problem like this, you want to um, make a table and organize your uh, properties because uh, to analyze the system of the, the performance of the system, you'll see that everything can be related in terms of enthalpies, at least for this problem. So uh, maybe the, the uh, Q in the steam generator if I just look at that, it's going to be an energy balance around that fluid stream right there. It'll be H1 minus H6. And then the work out of the first turbine, something like I'm trying to calculate this W out of the first turbine, and then we'll calculate the work out of the second turbine, and then the work into the pump. That work out of the first turbine stages in terms of changes in enthalpy is H1 minus H2. So you do an energy balance, control volume analysis. You assume the turbines are adiabatic, which is our standard assumption. You get H1 minus H2. And then Q reheat, that's going to be H3 minus H2. And then work second turbine will be h 3 minus H4, and Q out of the condenser, I should draw that right here, Q out of the condenser, the direction is out so that we have a positive entity following the, um, this, the notation of the textbook, it's um, H4 minus H3, and then the work of the pump is going to be H6 minus H5. And just a little aside, when we calculate the work of the pump, we often just do the specific volume at 5 coming in. It's saturated liquid. You want saturated liquid coming out of the condenser. And you multiply it by P6 minus P5, assuming it's reversible. So that would be our minimum work for the pump. All right. Once we calculate all the Qs, Ws, then we can do uh, like uh, work net out. The work net out of the system would be what the first turbine stage produces, the second turbine stage produces, minus what the pump consumes. Likewise, Q net in is going to be the Q from the steam generator first pass, Q on the reheat in the steam generator, minus Q dumped out of the condenser. And I recommend that you always check that these are equal because if they're not, look for an error. Energy is conserved for the whole system. So W net out must equal Q net in. Now, after a lot of work, we finally get to properties that, are, that characterize the overall performance of the system. The thermal efficiency, that's going to be the work net out 
divided by only the heat in. I know that Q net is the net heat in, which is so you subtract off QC, but just, just the amount in is the in the steam generator plus the reheat. See that for the thermal efficiency? And then the back work ratio is the work of the pump divided by the work out of the turbine one plus work turbine two. So these are, especially the last two are the bottom line. How is the system performing? Yes, sir. Uh, for the heat of the condenser, not Q5 minus Q4? Um, every time I do it, this is the way I do it, I try to help you, is, is uh, and this goes for the steam generator and all the turbines. Think of enthalpy as energy content, and the higher the enthalpy, the higher the energy content. So if I take a look, I'll say, let's say H1 versus H2. Which one is larger, H1 or H2? This is the way my mind works. I do this all the time. I'll say H1 is larger, and then some of that H is converted into work of the turbine out. So that'll help me write WT1 is H1 minus H2. So let's come down to the condenser. You're going to reject some heat out of it. Which H is going to be greater, H4 or H5? Have H3. This is 4 and this is 5 for the condenser. But in the equation that you have written across, the QC is equal to H4 minus H3. Then that's wrong. Yeah, thank you for correcting that. So it's H4 minus H5. Uh, thank you. For Do I have any other typos? Okay. So the strategy is make that table. And in that table, I recommend that you put the state one, two, three, four, five, six, and then put the pressure maybe in consistent units uh, like kilopascal, temperature and degree C, some quality or description, some enthalpy, some entropy. And then start populating this table. Often we know the pressures everywhere. Okay? So you also can make a quick diagram of this on a temperature entropy. That helps us. When you have two turbine stages, you'll have three distinct pressures, a high, an intermediate, and a low, right? Now, they're very close over here, but they're more distinct in the superheated region. But in the subcooled, they're pretty close together. And so uh, what you do is you come out, you expand, you reheat, you expand, and then you condense, you pressurize, and there you go. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, four probably and two could be slightly superheated or it could be two phase in the dome. As I've showed them here, they're, they're slightly superheated. Two and four are slightly superheated. Okay, and so you just walk around the pressures. Now, another problem I'm going to solve and I solved last time, we started with 10 megapascal and 10 kilopascal, I will just pick one megapascal for the intermediate pressure. But that could vary, just like 10 megapascal could vary. But it helps us put numbers and see how it works. So you put 10,000, then at state 2, what's the pressure? 1,000. At state 3, what's the pressure at state 3? 1,000, yeah. 1,000. There's no pressure. The pressure drops and the pressure gains are isolated to the pumps and the turbines. Through the condenser and through the steam generator, there's no pressure change. That's our first approximation. Real systems have friction in flow in pipes. And then we have it drop down to 10, 10, and then back up at state 6, what is the pressure? 10,000, right. And now you'd look at your temperatures. Maybe this is specified to be 440 degrees C or 600 degrees C or 580 degrees C, some degree of superheating. And now I know the temperature and the pressure. I like to think, okay, what two properties fix the state? Here for state one, temperature and pressure. With that, I can get H and I can get S. Okay. Once I know H1 and S1, how do I work on state two? Well, it's reversible expansion through that turbine 
unless they give me some information about the isentropic efficiency of the turbine, then I have two states, two, two S and two actual. But that's just an extra layer of complexity. Right now, we're just exploring superheating and reheating. So this S is equal to that S. S2 is equal to S1. Second law analysis around that first turbine stage. So temp pressure, sorry, pressure and entropy fix state two. Then I could look up things like the temperature and the enthalpy at state two. We go back to reheat. Often it's reheated back to some pressure, I mean some temperature like 440. That's not specified like the temperature here. It's you know limited to be that temperature. So what we have is temperature and pressure fix the state. We can get the enthalpy and entropy for state three. How about state four? Same as expansion through the first turbine stage. You do that just like that through the second turbine stage. And so the pressure and the entropy are used to calculate the temperature and the enthalpy at state four. How about state five? Saturated liquids. So the quality is, 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 uh, is what? One or no, not one, zero. It's saturated liquid. So it's, it's the pressure and uh, you can put sat liquid or just put X for quality and you know X is zero. And that allows us to get T, H, and S if need be. And then state six. The pump always is a little curious. What you typically do is you just say, I'll calculate the work of the pump as VDP, and then I'll add that to H5 to get H6. H6 is equal to H5 plus VDP. Or conceptually, it's, it's pressure and entropy, or pressure and enthalpy. But there it is in a nutshell.